American Sports Cavalcade. A panorama of speed, color, drama, and excitement. The American Sports Cavalcade. 20 years ago, Gita had a hard time convincing the builders of the Houston Astrodome that someday the pre-event festivities would consist of a pickup truck parade. It had a pretty hard time convincing them that 20 years in their future, one of the best attended events would feature multi-engine tractors and supercharged 4x4 trucks pulling a huge lead sled. Well, all of that has come to pass. Hello, everyone. I'm Steve Evans, and welcome to the Houston Astrodome for the TNT Red Man Super Nationals, a three-ring circuit of mechanized mayhem. Well, as the festivities continue and the crowd pours into the Astrodome, let's go outside to Paul Page. Well, Steve, in this part of Texas, where the likes of A.J. Foyt come from, they like their motors big, loud, and powerful. This one is 705 cubic inches. It's mounted in this four-wheel drive pickup. It's a 6,200-pound machine. And then, of course, the, the old standby, the tractor. Take a look at this one. Twin inline Rodex, 5,800 pounds. Those two motors are developing over 2,000 horsepower. And we've got 13 of these, the monster trucks. They're crowd pleasers, everybody loves them. And I'll tell you, when you're riding in one of these, you are definitely up in the air and off the ground. So no question about it, we've got some action lined up. Well, Paul, the monster truck action actually started earlier today during Bigfoot's qualifying run. Rich Hooser, the driver, and you talk about a tense moment. Take a look at this. Bigfoot, the Bob Chandler creation, the most famous monster truck of them all. In fact, the one that really started all the excitement. Here's our onboard camera, and you're about to go for a ride. Oh! Almost tipped over five tons of truck, Paul Page. Yeah, but with a skillful bit of driving, he got the thing back on its four feet and came down to complete the other half of the course. Bigfoot, really a showpiece for the people here at the Astrodome. When the run was complete, Steve Evans talked with Rich Hooser. I don't know what it looked like from your vantage point, but I thought that truck maybe was going over. Yeah, that, that corner, I wasn't thinking with all the sand out here, I thought I was being able to spin it around real quick and hit that hill, but it, it really grabs tight, and when it did, and it started to go over, the only thing I could do is I turned the tires to the right and nailed it, and it was pulling me out. Then to keep from going out of bounds, I had to, I had to stop and back up so I could finish the race so I could still qualify. Is that frightening? Just a little bit, but not too bad. Good luck tonight. Thank you. Not too bad for him, terrifying for the rest of us. Well, they've laid out two courses here as we're ready to go for the 4x4 pickup 6,200-pound class. We'll be concentrating on the course closest to us. And, of course, the magic words in this sport, Paul, are full pull. And the distance for the 4x4 trucks will be 300 feet. That's the back door, as they say. 300 feet the length of a football field. Charlie Lowe, Killer 2, is the first to hook to the weight transfer device that most of us just call a sled. Charlie comes out of West Palm Beach, Florida. The Killer 2 is really an 85 Ford Ranger, but it's got a Boss 429 Hemi on board. 560 cubic inches. Charlie's got a good pull going. See the weight transfer box moving forward on the sled. That makes it more difficult to pull. Charlie Lowe, short of a full pull. This is the first year, though, that he has been driving. Paul, well, he started about five years ago sponsoring a truck, and uh, the bug has bitten Charlie pretty hard. 288.26 feet is the pull, and uh, that's the distance that all the other drivers and trucks in the class will have to contend with. Of course, the idea here, besides being skillful at getting the machine down the track and preparing the machine well, is to find that section of the track in which you can get the greatest bite. Now, if you take a look here, he's down the right side of the track. Apparently, he walked and he decided this was exactly where he wanted to be, but it only took him down 288.26. I think there's some guys back in the line that'll take some shots at that. And it'll be interesting to see, Paul, if they elect to run in his tracks or move uh, elsewhere on the pulling surface. And, of course, just as soon as one pull is complete, the next man moves into line. Coming up now, Fernando Narvez from Laredo, Texas, in his 4x4. This is his first year of pulling ball, and he already has about 15 events under his belt and has won a couple of them. It's a 1986 Chevrolet, and listen to the engine size here. 604 cubic inches. The old adage, there's no substitute for cubic inches, is very true in the pulling sport. 
And of course, Steve, when you're talking that much horsepower, you have to be very careful. Now they're hooking up here, and you saw that that wire hooked onto the back of the 4x4. That's the kill switch, the dead man switch. If that thing would come loose, then it will shut everything down immediately so everybody is safe. Great looking Chevrolet truck with a real husky driver at the wheel, the truck owner, Fernando Narvez. Now, right now, he is selecting a gear there, Paul. They don't shift gears during the pull, and they've got a variety of gears in these transmissions. And he uh, just hopes he finds the right one for the track conditions, the weight of the sled. Pulls out, takes up the slack now, eyes that track. He, of course, like the others, have watched what has gone before, walked the track. Now he pours the power to the machine. The weight transfer box comes forward. He's got a good pull going. Now the engine begins to strain just a bit, and he grinds to a stop. Not quite as far as before. Look at those rear wheels spin. Narvez with 279.17 feet. Now his machine is named La Paloma, which of course means the dove, a rather gentle name for so much horsepower. Here we look again. Again, everyone seems to have decided that the right side of the course is the way to go, but you can see here he begins to drift across into the center and actually turning almost for the left side. Now the back wheels begin to pick up plenty of dirt from the track as they bog down and begin to build a hole. So Narvez at 279.17. Steve? Well, you missed by just a few feet. You were 279 feet compared to 288 from Charlie Lowe. Well, uh, I, didn't, I was going to change gears, but I didn't have enough chance to do it, and uh, I, I just did the best I could right now. Speaking of gears, what? how would you differ the gear ratios of the differentials fore and aft, front and back? Well, uh, for this kind of track that is hooking pretty good, I would have go to a lower gear, but by the time I got to see the truck, other trucks hook, it was too late for me to change it. Nice effort, thank you. But there's still plenty of time for others to make changes. Here's Tony Osteen. He's won that run. Now he checks out the track, trying to decide which side is best. We're back at the Houston Astrodome for the TNT Redman Super Nationals. That is Ron Hickson, and he has a very important job. He controls that giant weight transfer device that hooks to the 6,200-pound 4x4 truck. The next to pull, Paul Page, is Tony Osteen of the Georgia Rebel. Tony Osteen comes out of West Green, Georgia. Now, he is shooting at a mark of 288.26 feet. Now, you'll notice, Paul, that he has uh, opted for the left-hand side of the pulling surface. We've not seen anybody over there yet. That is uh, fresh territory. Of course, Tony, you saw him a little bit earlier, was watching the first two pulls. Now, he has to shoot at 288 feet and decided the left side may just hold the horsepower a little bit better. Tremendous momentum for Osteen, Paul. This is a very nice pull. Keeping the truck straight as is humanly possible. If it gets cockeyed, it's going to slow. He's done it. He has exceeded the mark of 288. In fact, he has pulled 292.52 feet. He'll be a happy man, I think. So the left side of the course apparently working well in the few minutes that he spent watching everybody else and walking down the course has paid off for Tony Osteen as he shuts the machine down. Let's take a look at this run once again. Here, we start with as low a gear as we can. You don't change gears. You select the one that you think will do the job, and he lays the power in it as we look at the end of the course. It finally starts to dig in. So Tony Osteen now has the mark to shoot at at 292.5. He's with Steve Evans. Well, Paul, Tony is just shy of a full pull, as you can see, but you did take over the lead in the class. Nice straight pass. Yeah, it felt real good. Uh, uh, I think it's going to hold a little while. I'll just have to wait and see what track does. Is it an advantage to pull early on this track or not? Well, we'll have to wait and see. Sometimes it's real advantage to pull last, so uh, I don't know if this will be the case this time. Well, it doesn't appear to be tearing up as badly as I've seen them do before. No, sir, it feels real good right now. Okay, good job, Tony. So the track is holding the power, and Tony Osteen now has the mark to beat at 292.52 feet. Well, Jerry Weaver is climbing in. He's ready to go. But while he buckles in, let's go a little bit earlier with Steve Evans at the scales. Here at the scales, the officials are checking in the 4x4 trucks in the 6,200-pound class. The pulling sport is interesting in that weight is an advantage. In most forms of motorsports, everybody trying to get their machines as light as possible. Here they want them as heavy as possible. You're only allowed to weigh a maximum of 6,200 pounds. Many-time champion Jerry Weaver has his truck on the scale. He's on the scale as well because they're always weighed with a driver. And Jerry, she's just about 140 pounds light. 
Well, some more. All right, he's got one of these big suitcase weights. Thing. How much is this one? 85. 85 pounds. Okay, get back on the scale. Let me check this out. Okay, 61, 60. She is still, according to the scales here, about 40 pounds light. Anything you can do? Uh, that's all the weight I brought with me. Uh, a lot of times these scales uh, weigh that way. They vary from pole to pole, but uh, I might have to go borrow one. I hate to be 40 pounds light. How big a disadvantage would that be? Uh, like I said, 15 uh, pounds I could probably live with, but 40, I'm going to go borrow one. And have a big dinner to go along with it, right? Yeah, that, that'd work. All right, thanks, Jerry. Of course, we could also volunteer Steve Evans to just sit up in the back. Well, Jerry Weaver found the weight necessary, and he is now ready to go the distance to beat. You see it there, 292.52 feet. Jerry is out of Thornville, Ohio, a suburb of Columbus, and the only other racing ball he did before he got involved in tractor pulling was go-karts. The go-kart didn't weigh much more than the bumper on this truck. All right, here's Jerry Weaver. You see those big kind of paddle-like tires, and he slowly feeds it the power. He's not just stomping down all at once with this 600 cubic inch engine. The engine roars, the power applied. He's got a good pull going. The track holding very well. They've done a good job now. It begins to bog down and digs in. And Weaver at 283.27. So the man to beat is still Tony Osteen at 292.52 feet. So Jerry Weaver, not quite good enough here in the Houston Astrodome. Down the course and beginning to buckle in is Ken Popham. They call him Pappy. The machine is the Milky Way. Down at the other end of the course, Steve Evans is with Jerry Weaver. Well, Jerry, everyone was saying if anybody could knock Osteen's number off the board, it was you, but uh, just a bit short. Uh, I kind of did real triple with you. I kind of lost the start up on this nationwide truck tonight. How did you do that? Uh, I came out of it and got on it real quick, and it just spun the tires. I lost traction. And then I got back into it and it hooked up, but that one split second ruined it. If you could go back in the line and tell a friend how to drive this track, what would you tell him? I can really give him a lot of uh, help right now. What would you tell him? Tell him to ease it out coming out of the hole and then get on it. Well, there's some advice that Pappy Popham could use, but unfortunately, he's already buckled in and ready to go and does not have advantage of that information. Now, Pappy started driving about eight years ago in the tractors, then moved up to the trucks. You know, the truck you mentioned, Paul, is called the Milky Way. Well, that's appropriate because Ken Popham is in the dairy business down in his home state of Texas. There's that giant hook being uh, attached to the very sturdy eye on the back of the truck. And as soon as the uh, kill switch is connected and they get an OK from the officials on the sled, we will see our next puller, Pappy Popham. The distance to beat, Tony Osteen's 292 and a half feet. You know, the nice thing about the tractor pull here in the Astrodome, like most motorsports, it's not only a visual show, but the noise these things make is absolutely terrific. It really adds to the enjoyment. Well, they should make some noise, Paul. Almost 600 cubic inches of Chevrolet under the hood of this truck on methanol or alcohol fuel. That makes it close to 1,000 horsepower, but I don't think it's enough here. Nah, no, he's short. If anything, perhaps just a little too much. 270.99 feet for Pappy Popham, not nearly enough. It is still Tony Osteen at 292.5 that leads in the pull. Still, there are plenty of competitors back in the line in the 6,200-pound 4x4 pickup trucks. As we take a look at the leaderboard to this point, Tony Osteen's Georgia Rebel is the leader at 292.5 feet. At the far end of the strip now, Steve Evans is with Pappy Popham. Ken, I know you had the hammer down, but just about a truck length short. Yeah, we had the wrong gear in tonight. We just had a little too high. Had a little too higher gear in. You know, you're not the only driver that's told me that. That appears to be pretty inanimate. They'd all go put a lower gear in it now if they could. Yeah, well, anyway, I'd like to thank TNT and, and Red Man for having me anyway. Pleasure to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, the course has given them plenty of bite. Some of the others may go for a lower gear. Coming up next, the Monster Trucks from the Houston Astrodome. Oh, take a look at this. Now, that's a safety consideration more than anything else. What they hope is that the straw will support the roofs of the cars a bit, and they won't develop deep depressions that a monster truck can drop a wheel in and snap that wheel right off. So all in all, $100 worth of straw could prevent an incident tonight. This is kind of fun, actually. Don't try this at home. They've also filled the trunks of these cars with old tires. Now, here is Paul Huffaker from Woodlands, Texas. 
He's in his Ford monster truck, and he will face the Carolina Crusher of Gary Porter from Waitsboro, North Carolina. It's a typical Ford Chevrolet battle. And you know, Paul, these trucks are not just monsters inside. They have some pretty monstrous engines. Many of them over 450 cubic inches. They all have superchargers on them to boot. Hey, this is a good race. A wave of the green flag, the Carolina Crusher is out, running in the lead at the moment. Now as they come down to the turn at the far end, it's Huffaker that makes the turn in quicker, and he has the advantage. Now, two quick moguls lie just ahead as they're neck and neck, and it is the Carolina Crusher and Gary Porter that takes the win. Boy, that one has the crowd on its feet, Paul, and we might point out that the finish line is located not kind of midway between that last bunch of jump cars. Let's take a look at where the Carolina Crusher won it, right over that jump. Tremendous air. Watch these huge tires as they compress. Gary Porter will be back to race again in the monster truck category. Hey, Paul, did you ever wonder how a guy gets into one of these trucks? I mean, some use a ladder. Here's the real man's way, as demonstrated by Gary Porter of the Carolina Crusher. You could get hurt just doing that. I think I'll stick with the latter idea. Steve, in the meantime, action everywhere over on the pulling course. Here is Greg Cook in wild blue. Greg is from Mount Airy, North Carolina. Here comes that weight transfer box about to get cozy with the back of his truck, and that will be an unwelcome guest. It just lurches him to a stop way short of the required distance. Remember the mark to be 292? Well, this is only 266, Paul. So this is actually the worst pull to this point, and I'm wondering, Steve, if the course itself isn't beginning to break up and cause them problems and making it much harder to guess. Let's take a look at this run one more time. Now, he's in pretty good shape. You can see some mild break up there, but he is rolling pretty good to this point. Now the wheels begin to spin a little bit. He gets them back under control, but he's already bogging down, slowing down. The engine is laboring, and he begins to dig in. So Greg Cook with a 266 foot, just a shade over that. He's at the far end with Steve. It's hard to tell from as far down the track as I am, but it looked like it just didn't get the early momentum it needed to carry it out. Uh, yeah, it felt like when I come out on it, it sort of broke loose, and I tried to, you know, let off to let it catch up, and then it was just, man, it loaded me hard, so I don't know. I just screwed up. Thanks for talking about it. Well, that mistake definitely cost him 266 feet. Back at the line is from Nashville, Tennessee, the Tennessean. Donnie Sanders is the driver. Again, the mark to beat, 292 and a half. That's set by Tony Osteen. You were talking about the course earlier, Paul, maybe uh, not being as impact as tightly as it could be. Uh, you may be right, and I think Donnie Sanders is going to be one of the competitors concerned about that. TNT does a tremendous job of rolling their equipment out there and filling in the, uh, the divot, so to speak, as best they can. But uh, it may be an advantage to a pull very early in this class. Ultra long wheelbase on the Tennessee and truck. Look at it. It is a beautiful prepared machine. I'll tell you, it may be one of the prettiest machines here. That giant bumper and all of the magnificent paintwork, but that isn't making the power and doesn't make the run. He pulls way short at 239.21. So Donnie Sanders falls short, and Tony Osteen is still the man in the number one slot. Well, I think the course is bothering these guys. It has been breaking up, and as we take a look at the leaderboard, there's been no change here. These were the first five guys who were out, and that long pull came very early on in the evening. At the far end, Steve is with Donnie Sanders. Well, Donnie, first of all, congratulations on a beautiful new truck, and condolences on a pull a bit shorter than you wanted. Well, I'd like to thank Jerry Janke for building that motor and TNT and Red Man for inviting us to come here and putting on such a good track for us to, to pull on. I have to tell you, the craftsmanship in this truck is as fine as any race car or show car that I've ever seen. We took a long time to build it and spent quite a few dollars to build it. Quite a few dollars is how much? Excess of 50000 I'll tell you, it looks like a million. Thank you. Thank you. It is definitely one beautiful machine. Well, we move now over to the monster truck course, where no problem is ready to take on Clydesdale. We'll see John Moore and Bennett Clark when we come back. We're back in the Astrodome in Houston, Texas. I'm Steve Evans, along with Paul Page, the TNT Red Man Super Nationals, and we're about to do a little more of that monster mash, Paul Page. 
The only mashing I suspect, Steve Evans, is some of the cars that are laid out on the track as we take a look at Clydesdale, a Chevrolet monster as he inches up to the line. The Clydesdale is driven by Bennett Clark from Canton, Georgia, and he will face no problem. No problem driven by John Moore from Lafayette, Tennessee. And Steve can update us on no problem. You might remember last season, right here at the Astrodome, we told you about the split personality of the monster truck called No Problem. Not only is it a racing monster truck, it's also a completely legal boat. Registration numbers, bow light, stern light, they drive a prop off of the power takeoff. Well, a promoter in Honolulu saw that very show and thought, what a great idea to help publicize his upcoming monster truck event in Aloha Stadium. So he got a hold of the owner, John Moore, down in Fort Lauderdale, and they came to terms. They trucked the truck all the way to Oakland, California, where the Bronco went one of those huge containers. The tires and wheels went another container, and it spent five days bounding across the Pacific to Honolulu. Naturally, John and his wife flew. Well, the promoter was right. The press fell in love with the truck. He drove it right into Alloway Harbor and gave rides to TV crews, newspapers, radio reporters got a lot of publicity for the promoter and everybody seemed to genuinely enjoy terrorizing the surfers and sunbathers at Waikiki Beach who just couldn't believe what they were seeing well John we're proud to have been of service you had a great vacation you and your wife the promoter I understand had a big crowd but next time take along the guy that after all was responsible for it all aloha matter of fact John take along both of us you know, Paul, last year, no problem, was very competitive here in the Astrodome. But that was a very tight course. And that little Bronco doesn't have a whole lot of power. It's not fitted with a supercharger. Clydesdale has a much bigger, more powerful engine, and it's paying off so far. Well, I don't know. No problem is more competitive maybe than anybody thought. And, of course, the key is making this tight turn. Now, they all have four-wheel steering, but steering of the best is Clydesdale. Now, if the Clydesdale can stay on top of those cars, not slide out, and maybe foul himself out of competition, he's going to win it, he does. Clydesdale goes to the next round. Bennett Clark moves ahead while John Moore is out of the event. Now, no problem indeed has some problems here. So if we go back and take a look in the action itself, you can see there are those crushed cars, and he got the left side of his machine off, almost tipped it all the way over, got it back under control, but of course, this was eating up time, so Bennett Clark and Clydesdale moved ahead for the win. Who knows, John, if you'd taken us to Hawaii with the magic of video, things might have worked out different. In the meantime, on the pulling course, Terry Davis, crew of one, primes up his engine as he is ready to start for his pull on the tractor pulling course in the 4x4. Now, let's go over to Steve Evans. Bennett Clark with Clydesdale. Your impression of this course, it's pretty fast. Yeah, it's an awful fast course. It's, uh, it gets a little rough coming over the cars there. It's an awful fast course, probably the fastest course I've ran on this year. And it appeared to me, as I talked to some other drivers, it's pretty tough making that tight turn to the other end. Oh, it turned pretty tight. I can make a better left-hand turn than I can a right-hand turn. I decided I had lane choice. I took right-hand turn. I just give it all I had coming out of that turn, straightened it up. Everything worked out fine. Steve, about the only thing I can figure out is with a high center of gravity, maybe just because you're sitting on one side, that would give you a better chance at turning one way versus the other. Or it might have to do with the controls for the four-wheel steering. Paul, some of them are a little toggle switch or a hydraulic lever. Maybe it wants to steer four-wheeled one way better than the other. Who's to know? Over on the pulling course, Terry Davis, the super thing, is ready to go after that challenge of 292 and a half feet. Well, Paul, this truck is based in Tampa, Canning, Virginia, a community so small that they don't even have a weekly newspaper, so they read the paper from the metropolis down the road, Rappahannock. Well, Terry Davis, the former drag racer, pours the power on. He's looking pretty good, but he drifts a little over to the left, and he may have drifted over that line. Of course, if he did so, he'll be disqualified. Oh, you bet. The TNT officials are very, very concerned about safety, and that's why they draw lines down the side. They don't want any driver getting carried away just for a victory. Let's see, it's awfully close. All right, now, if you would drift over the line on either side, just touch it, then you would be disqualified. And you can see here that he is very, very close. But I think he's actually steering it away. If he's not touching it, it's a miracle. He's done a magnificent job to keep this machine on the course. And the officials are now reporting a distance, 249.73, so they say it is a legal run. Back at the other end, 
stitches, backs up. This is Carol Lyons ready to pull. And as we wait, let's go to the other end. Steve Evans with Terry Davis. Well, Terry, that was close to a disqualification going over that outside line, but I just looked back at the officials and they gave me a thumbs up, so you're okay that way. Yeah, but they don't want the track. The track's just going to nothing there, and uh, I just went for broke to see if I could uh, make a good run out outside the line now, but it just evidently didn't do too good. You tried some fresh territory to the far left, and that didn't work either. That didn't work neither. The track's just about gone. So Carol Lyons in stitches, she's ready to go. Now, it's actually her father, Jim Lyons. There's Jim. He is the regular driver on this machine. And look how carefully he checks his daughter's machine out and sees that it's hooked up properly and ready to run. You know, Paul, there's nowhere you practice with this sport. You just have to learn an actual competition. And that's what Carol is doing. I mean, there's no place you can go rent a sled and a strip of dirt to try to get it all right. And I tell you, it is not all right for the young lady here. It appears from my vantage point anyway, it might have been in the wrong gear. But I would guess that Daddy Jim told her what gear to pull in. Well, if in fact he did, then she's learned one of the most valuable lessons of all, which is make your own decisions. 231 feet. Well, still, it is Tony Osteen that is out in front at 292 and a half. And as you can see on the leaderboard, very little has changed as the course continues to deteriorate. Let's go to the other end and Steve. Carol, it sounded like maybe the engine just never got up into its power band, like maybe the RPMs were down a bit. Well, we put a taller gear in it, and it wasn't right for this track. It just kind of fell on its face. They're calling this a tight track. In other words, it takes a lot of power or a low gear. Yeah, right. A lot of power and a low gear. <laughs> the Yellow Rose of Texas. The driver, Manuel Moreno, last year's champion. His pull is coming up next. We're back in the Houston Astrodome for more TNT Redman Super Nationals pulling. You know, Paul Page, since we started this 6,200-pound 4x4 truck clap, there really hasn't been much change in the leaderboard. Tony Osteen pulled early and set down the mark that still stands of 292 and a half feet. But if anyone can do it, it's last year's champion, Manuel Moreno from Texas in the Yellow Rose. As a matter of fact, Steve, Moreno scored that victory last year, pulling in the last position. And that's where he sits right now. The machine is a 1984 Chevrolet Silverado, 604 cubic inches. It develops over 1,000 horsepower. But the trick here seems to be one of how to use that kind of horsepower. It has been overused in several cases before. They dig into the track, and of course, that doesn't give you any traction at all. Well, as I recall last year, Paul, uh, the pulling horse had a really a different personality to it. It was harder, and it got better as the pulling progressed. Not so, so far tonight, but who knows? Maybe a man with Manuel's experience and uh, obvious talent can make this all work for him. I'll tell you, there's sure a huge crowd pulling for it. A lot of Texans, as you might imagine, in the Astrodome. So he's hooked up. This is the last pull in the 6,200-pound 4x4 truck, a rev of that engine. Boy, he is going for it, isn't he, Paul? Whacked that throttle a couple of times to get all eight cylinders running plate. And here is the best of the business, Manuel Moreno. Can he top 292 and a half feet? Here comes the weight transfer box. He's still a ways away. He's slowing, and it stopped him dead in his track. Short. Digs into the course at 269. 0.97 feet, not nearly good enough. So Moreno, in a final bid, the last puller of the evening in the 6,200-pound 4x4, can't get the job done. So we take a look at the final results for 6,200-pound modified 4x4 trucks, and Tony Osteen, with his pull, a magnificent one of 292 and a half feet, is the winner. Let's go to the far end, and Steve. Well, Paul, Manuel Moreno unable to make it two wins in a row here at the Super Nationals. Manuel, well, looking at that pull, it appeared that you were bitten by uh, the draw earlier. If you had pulled earlier in the class, you might have won it. The, the crowd went a little bit away, but uh, well, that's in the middle of the game. Just incredible horsepower considering the track conditions. It's rumored that you have the biggest engine in uh, this kind of pulling. Care to reveal how big it really is? 704 cubic inches. 704 cubic inches. Chevrolet motor. Oh, it, no wonder it has some power. Well, better luck next year. We'll see you then. Thank you. Uh -huh. Well, Steve, he's down on the entry form at 604 cubic inches, 604, 704. It didn't do him any good at all. On the far side, Southern Storm, the monster truck of Robbie Giles, and he will face this machine. 
the master of disaster, a member of a brand new association. Since we were last here at the Astrodome, there's been a new organization for it, the MTRA, Monster Truck Racing Association. It is comprised of the owners and drivers of these machines and is dedicated solely to safety. Let me show you some of the things that have come about in just a few months thanks to this new organization. I'll use the Master of Disaster Truck as a good example. Now, they don't use wheel brakes on these trucks. They use driveline brakes, one four and one aft. And that brake rotor in there could spin as high as engine speed, 6,500 RPM. Now, should it explode, come apart, It'd probably blow the tires right off the truck. So it is now required to be encased in quarter-inch steel. Nothing's going to get through that. Okay, now, alongside the engine now, there are steel side covers. Should you break a connecting rod and any of the pieces get through the block of the oil pan, these huge thick plates are going to keep those pieces between the frame rails where they belong. Now, you'll notice the yellow blanket around the automatic transmission. That is ballistic nylon. Again, should there be any kind of a transmission problem, it'll contain the pieces. We know that works. We've seen it in other forms of motorsport. The drive line is of prime concern. Each of the U-joints also is protected in a bell housing, if you will, quarter-inch steel around every U-joint. And see the two loops right there around the drive shaft? Should that drive shaft come loose on one end or the other, it can't just whip around, creating all kinds of havoc. But the trucks aren't the only concern of the MTRA. They have also drafted a list of suggestions for promoters as to how to design safer and less destructive courses. The one on the floor of the Astrodome today is a prime example. Remember last year, a couple of close calls, near collisions? Well, you'll notice t tonight the trucks are a little wider spaced. They're doing a great job not only making the sport safer, they are definitely making it faster. Southern Storm, Robbie Giles, the driver, he comes from Goose Creek, South Carolina. He's driving a Ford. He faces Doug Spanier from Albany, Minnesota in his Chevrolet. Monster trucks on the line and ready to go. Well, you know, Paul, at one time, the monster trucks were really a novelty and attractable that go out and crush a few cars and uh, drive the people uh, out of their minds. This uh, competition is a relatively new thing, and there's a lot of techniques these drivers and builders are having to learn. Master of disaster, maybe in the wrong gear, something, it's not going anywhere. Southern Storm is off on a single run. You know, it's too bad, too, because Southern Storm is really having a nice run. He gets a little wide on the turn, but he obviously is aware that Master of Disaster has stopped back at the starting line, and he can really take it easy right now as he works his way over those crush cars. Look at that thing bounce. The Southern Storm, in what is really a bye run, wins this round as Master of Disaster breaks on the line. Finally, Master of Disaster gets going, comes down the course, and all he's really doing is putting on a show for the magnificent fans here, and he drives off the course completely, just trying to get out of the Houston Astrodome, having lost this round. So now, let's speak with the driver of the Southern Storm, Robbie Giles. Great drive. Thank you very much, Steve. He had a bad start somehow. I didn't see what happened. I was concentrating on my side, but somehow he didn't get off the line. As smooth, it looks like the track suits your style to a T. Yes, sir. We've got a good suspension this year on it. It's our new truck, and it's really helped out a lot. Those old straw bills appear to be working, too. Yeah, it's the first time we've used that. It keeps them getting the big holes in all the cars. It's really working nice. Why don't you go tune it up? Thank you, Steve. So another round of the monster trucks complete, and we're back at the starting line for the 5,800-pound dragster tractor. Wayne Sullivan, back to Kentucky and up and ready to hook up and go. This is one stout piece of machinery, Paul, from Warsaw, Kentucky. Now, they use the big agriculture-type uh, tires on the back, and these tires are pretty tough. They seldom ever wear them out. In fact, you'll see most of these tires now are shaved. They've even gotten rid of uh, the big blade effect on those tires. They were just digging up the track too bad. Now, that's required. You put your hands in the air like that so that all of the people working between the tractor and the sled know that you're not accidentally going to knock that into gear or touch the hand throttle. Of course, the appearance of these machines, though these are highly modified, kind of harkens back to the original days when you took your tractor off your farm, went to the county fair, and pulled against your neighbor. Now, we're talking two Rodex engines in here, so we're talking some major modifications. 260 feet is the course length. And we watch Wayne Sullivan from Warsaw, Kentucky. And as is demonstrated by Mr. Sullivan, these monsters are not easy to drive. Now, there's the big box that stopped on the sled. It's to pull the Kentucky into a stop as well, but not before he got a full pull, 260 feet and better. That's right, he ran the entire distance, and look at the front end come off the ground. Of course, really, you want to try and keep that front end down because when you transfer the weight backwards, you're also causing it to dig in just a little bit. Well, Wayne Sullivan with a full pull, and that gives you an idea of what may be coming up.
back at the line now. Here comes Ron Headley. The machine is called Betty's Headache. Headley comes out of Fairfield, Iowa. And we are watching the highly modified Dragster Tractors. I don't think modified is the word here, Paul. I think it's custom built. There may be nothing but the, maybe the rear end housing in this thing that ever came out of any kind of a tractor. And you're looking at two GMC supercharged Hemi racing engines. The exhaust pipes, the zoomy headers like you find on a dragster at the drag strip, but the, everything else is totally different. They run on alcohol fuel. They don't run quite the bore boost of compression you run in draggers because these guys, they pull almost every night of the week, and you don't have time to take them apart and fix them. Now, the wheels are spinning as it feeds the throttle to it. This is a, oh, it looks to be a nicely balanced tractor until the front end got up too high. You can see there's only two suitcase weights on the front. You might have wanted more, but still, it's a full pull on this abbreviated 260-foot course. So now we have two machines completing a full pull. Makes you wonder if the distance shouldn't have been set just a little bit further. We look back at Ron Headley's run. Now you see his hand on the wheel and he's giving it a spin. Doesn't do any good. The wheels aren't on the ground. They're actually controlling this thing with the brake. But if you put too much brake on, then you slow down the rear wheels. That slows down your run. You don't go the distance. Ron Headley, in fact, got the distance. He's a full pull along with Wayne Sullivan, who also had a full pull. So we're going to have a pull-off. Ron Headley completes his course, bouncing the machine up and down, probably needs a little bit more weight on the front. Steve? You know, people underestimate the amount of driving talent, and they're more track savvy in sensing the track that's involved in this sport. It's pretty incredible. It's, it's really especially important on a tractor like ours where we have to get the weight all on the back wheels, but we do not want the front end very high because that lowers our drawbar, so it's real critical for us. Well, you did a great job. See you in the pull-off. Thank you. Well, it looks like we're going to have a hot pull-off. Let's see who else might make it in. Will it be Billy Kelly as he starts his engine on the Denham Springs Express? Well, the old Astrodome is fairly rocking tonight with the TNT Redman Super National Truck and Tractor Bulls. I'm Steve Evans along with Paul Page, and that is Billy Kelly. He is hooked to the sled in the 5,800-pound modified Dragster Tractor Class. Two drivers already are in the pull-up, and Kelly may be headed that way, Paul. The machine is the DS Express, and we've had two full pulls so far. Did Billy Kelly get it done? Yes, indeed. A third full pull, so we've got a whale of a pull-off coming. I wonder who else, Steve, is going to make it into this field. We'll find out in a few minutes, but right now it's time for Bigfoot as monster truck action continues. And Bigfoot will be up against one of the better monster trucks in the country, Paul, Stomper. Stomper is a great-looking Chevrolet, Steve, driven by a couple of folks. Gail Pepper drives sometimes. Now it's being driven by Mike Witt. And, of course, he faces the challenge of Bigfoot, driven by Rich Hooser. Now, these monster trucks have some very sophisticated safety equipment on board. The Monster Truck Racing Association has just recently instituted some interesting new safety regulations regarding the driver and the cockpit. Let's take a look at the interior of the famed Bigfoot. First of all, roll bars are now mandatory in all trucks. Four-point mounted, eighth of an inch wall thickness, and heavily padded where needed. Also, the driver, Rick Hooser, must have a substantial kill switch. Not just some kind of a little toggle switch, but something he can get a hold of. And here in Bigfoot, it's mounted in the dash. And Rick pushes this in if he wants to kill the engine instantly, rather than pulling it. It's always easier to push something than it is to try to grab it and pull it. Now, experimental here today on Bigfoot is a remote control kill operation. Okay, you see the antenna on this box attached to the roll cage. One of Rick's crew people has a little remote control, like you change channels with on the TV. Well, if Rick should become unconscious or incapacitated for whatever reason, they just push a button, the truck just stops instantly right in its tracks. Now, all of the drivers will be wearing flame retardant clothing. That wasn't required before, suggested, but not required. The blood type is also ID'd there on the suit. Now, as far as the helmet is concerned, it must be a Snell-approved helmet, just like you'd find in any other form of professional motorsports. Now, Rick also likes to wear this pad on his arm because he hangs out the window so much that his arm is getting a big bruise on it, and Bob Chandler, the owner, said he was also denting up the door, so you'll see that on this particular driver. And he also, you will find a neck 
collar. Everyone is using these, and it really has improved uh, their neck as far as the next morning is concerned. They're not all uh, stiff and sore. Now, also, they must always have a Halon fire extinguisher, very handy to the driver. In Bigfoot, it attaches to a bracket just to the left of the seat. There are now competition-style lap belts in all of these trucks. And all in all, the drivers, the crews, the associations are really going forward as far as safety is concerned with these vehicles as they become faster and more competitive. You're talking some serious sophistication in the monster trucks. Round number two, that's Bigfoot on the near side, Stomper on the far side as they await the green flag. Bigfoot gets the rollout. Oh, yeah, a hole shot by Rich Hooser, and now you're on board, Stomper. Look at all the flash bulbs going off in the Astrodome, and probably through that windshield, you're going to, yeah, there's Bigfoot off of the lead, having already made that turn. Well, Stomper's got his hands full, and look at Bigfoot. Flags flying at the back as Stomper makes the turn now, tries to get up over the moguls. Bigfoot wins it, and you can see out the front of Stomper definitely some problems. They've slowed down substantially as he comes over those crushed cars. Little horizon, little grandstand, a little of everything out the front of Stomper. One thing's for sure, Stomper comes in in second place. Bigfoot wins the round. Well, let's take a look at the Stomper truck in action. I'll tell you, this machine gives gravity a bad name. Look at how high in the air five tons can get. Takes a whale of a bounce on those already crushed cars. Look at him. He comes up for a second round and almost gets her upside down. But brings Stomper back under control, and that really cost him. Bigfoot wins the round. Over in the pulling lane. Missouri's Ed Gobro. He's ready in the Blue Ox. This is the 5,800-pound class dragster tractor, and we have several full pulls already. What will happen when the Blue Ox fires up? Well, the distance is 260 feet. This is a twin-engine tractor of all the time. Oh, the balance is beautiful on this machine. Look at him, Paul. I think he can drag it all the way to Galveston. What a pull by Ed Cobra. Boy, you couldn't ask for a nicer round, and the crowd here in the Astrodome shows their appreciation. A full pull, so now he goes into contention with three other men, and they don't come much better than that. He just yanked that weight all the way down the 260-foot course. The only thing I noticed here, Paul, in the replay is look at the chassis flex, okay? The balance is nice, but you'd rather have those front wheels a little more level instead of that right wheel dipping down. And that's all because the torque of the engines is just twisting the chassis. Boy, no kidding. You talk about torque. It's just trying to flip that thing upside down. One very, very pretty run. He begins to drift a little off to his right at the end of the 260-foot course. So we've got some definite action in the 5,800-pound dragster tractors. So we've definitely got a pull-off. So far involved, Wayne Sullivan, Ron Headley, Billy Kelly, and now Ed Govro. So it will make for some real excitement in just a few minutes. Do the words full pull mean anything to you? Good job. Yeah, that sounds good. It was really hooked up good there. Now, what do you think? Did you just make it look easy, or is it a, you're going to see a lot of uh, tractors go to a pull-off? Uh, there might be a few more out there. If uh, they got a way to write, I believe they might get it out. You appeared to have the balance just right. Yeah, it was perfect. Got a good good one that time. Perfect. That's all right, I understand. Hey, what, tell me about this little gasoline engine here, this Briggs and Stratton. It looks like something out of a lawnmower. Yeah, I use that to uh, unload it and load it off my bus or drive it around here. We don't have a tow track I can drive it around here. All right, good thinking. Okay, let's see what happens. You can win it all. Okay. It says there's still four to come. Hey, you like World War II aircraft engines? Well, we've got a 12-cylinder Allison in a tractor puller coming up next. A good percentage of the people in the Astrodome today were not even born when that engine was manufactured. That is an Allison V-12 out of World War II era aircraft. And all of you people who wrote me letters, all of you airplane enthusiasts, after last year's show, I never will again say that that engine was in the P-51 Mustang even though it wasn't a couple. I'll tell you where you have seen these engines more recently is in the unlimited hydroplanes, the boats. These and the Griffon engine were the stable of that sport until they went over to the turbines. And Paul, I love the name of Jerry Fornich's tractor, Lurch. That was my favorite character in the Athens family, the butler. He was about the size of a B-12 Allison. All right, this machine is out of the state of Iowa and is underway. It looks a little front end heavy as he rolled away. Nope, now the front end comes up for a beautiful weight transfer. Up too high. 
Ballard is off of it, and not enough steam either. A little too much. Jerry fights it there at the end, digs himself in. Not nearly good enough. 255 feet does not get him into the pull-off. In fact, he's the first fellow that we've seen not go the full 260 feet. So Jerry Fornish is out of the run and obviously disappointed. Now, watch here. You see the back wheel spinning, trying to grab traction. And then the front end comes up way, way too high. That's too much weight transfer. And the run is effectively over. So the first man not to pull the four 260 feet is Jerry Fornash. That magnificent supercharged 12-cylinder Allison engine sounded great, but it didn't get the job done here tonight. Let's go to the far end. Here's Steve Evans. Let me ask you something about one of these big monster motors. But they don't like high RPMs. They use a different gear than an automotive-style tractor would. Well, we, we run them so that we can't get around 4,500 RPMs. Over that, they would self-destruct. Yeah, but the torque is awesome. Yeah, you're right. You're so right. Thank you. Jerry Fornish, Paul, quite a gentleman. A pleasure to talk to him down here. And back up at the starting line, I can see that Bob Chickering is the next tractor to hook. That is the inch pitcher out of Bloomfield, Iowa. I think some people are left with the impression after watching these guys that maybe driving one of these tractors is easy. Paul found out otherwise. You know, Steve, these 5,800-pounders may be the trickiest to drive. First of all, before the run begins, you've got to make a decision and set your weight. If you're off by as little as 50 pounds, your run could be over before it starts. Once the run begins, you're trying to get it up, get it to plane out and balance. Because they're so light, they're also very fast to respond. As you're riding the throttle and the brake, if it takes a hop, if you don't jump on it right away, well, then you've lost again. So some of the greatest skill in the sport right here. I'm impressed, Paul. You could have a future as a as a polar after all of that. You, you learn quickly. I'll tell you, I'm not so sure. They really apparently are very tough to drive, though we've seen some superlative runs already here. And we are looking forward to what ought to be an incredible pull-off. And speaking of power, how about Bob Chickering? Now, this is another of the Allison, but it is far more modified than Jerry Bornish's motor that failed to carry him the distance. It looks like, yes, Bob Chickering is going to join the crowd in the pull-off. Another full pull. So now we have five men lined up for the pull-off. Bob Chickering joins in that Allison engine. As Steve suggested, highly modified. Look at those exhaust stacks coming out of the side. One magnificent-looking machine, and it really doesn't get any better than this. Look at how carefully he reaches down, controls that brake, and makes what could be considered an absolutely perfect run. Now, Bob Chickering is at the far end with Steve. Well, Bob, apparently this track is holding up because you make number five going to the pull-up. Congratulations. Hey, it's a real good track. You know these engines look so massive and complicated. Are they really? Oh, they can be a little, a little ornery once in a while. They're... I've had, I've destroyed one-ish about a month ago. How many man hours would go into rebuilding one of these old girls? How what? How many man hours would it take to, to really go through one of these and freshen it up? Took me about a week. A week of eight-hour days? Well, no, it's longer than that. Okay, we'll see you at the pull-off. Okay, thank you. So one Allison goes to the pull-off. Bob Chickering with a masterful run. Now this is Ken Popham. You saw his dad in the four-wheel drive trucks. He's backing up to hook up the outlaw, and he is the last puller before the pull-off. Now, if he makes it in, then we'll have six running in the pull-off. Boy, is this a beautifully detailed tractor. I wonder how much it costs to polish those wheels. You know, I love the little slogan there on the weight transfer box called decision maker, because not everything is in the hands of the drivers or the mechanics because that slide has an awful lot to say about the outcome of any pull. And when we get to the pull-off a little later on, well, they'll change the weight in that box and make it even tougher. Look at those huge rear tiles spin. Maybe spinning just a little too hard. Ken Popham, the outlaw, bounces up and down. He fights and struggles with it. It's 260 feet for a full pull, and Ken Popham comes up short. 257 feet, so he doesn't make it into the pull-off but five other men will, and that should make for some real excitement here in the Astrodome. 257 feet, and he's disappointed. 
Here are the five that are in. Sullivan, Headley, Kelly, Ed Govro, and Bob Chickering all make it in to the pull-off with a full pull. Now let's go to Steve. This is a broken supercharger drive belt. Were it not broken and still on the motor, then you might be in that pull-off. You had a lot of momentum going. I'm pretty sure I would have been in pull-off if, if the belt wouldn't have broke. Now, oftentimes, though, it's not the belt at fault. There's things that happen inside the motors or superchargers that can cause them to break. Yes, it is, but uh, this is just the fact of the old belt, I guess. Right, better change the belts more often. Well, it's both been a new one not long ago. It just a little bit of oil and everything caused it to break. Sorry to see you come up just a few feet short. So we've got a pull-off coming in the 5,800-pound dragster tractors. The semifinal of the monster trucks is coming up next. We're back in the Houston Astrodome, and those big tires can only mean one thing. It's time for more monster truck competition. And there is the Carolina Crusher, Gary Porter. Not a lot of power in that truck. It's a small 327 Chevrolet. Quite a bit of power, however, in the Clydesdale. This is Bennett Clark at the wheel. I'm Steve Evans along with Paul Page. And Paul, from high in the Astrodome, they almost look like toys, but they're deadly serious racing machines. Indeed, they are, and very, very agile. Carolina Crusher jumps out into the lead over Clydesdale. Clydesdale having some trouble as Clydesdale makes the turn. Clydesdale turned in a little bit early, and as a result, they're now neck and neck. Oh, Bennett Clark made a tremendous turn in the Clydesdale. Gary Porter got a little out of shape, had to take some time to straighten the truck out, and is going to be Clydesdale in the far lane, the multi-hute blue truck. Bennett Clark, he will go into the final round of Monster Truck Racing. And there, he will face the winner of the round between Southern Storm and Bigfoot. But Bennett Clark wins this round. We go back and look. This was Gary Porter's problem. Look how high he gets in the air. Takes a big bounce and almost pulls the machine off. You see him try to turn the wheels and get it back under control, while at the same time, here is Bennett Clark in Clydesdale. Nice straight down the way, makes a little correction with his wheels, bouncing nice and even, and gets the job done. Well, Paul, here's a follow-up on the straw bale story that I filed earlier. Apparently, the bales are doing their job. Look at this. The roofs of the cars are crushed down on top of the bales. If the bales weren't there, who knows? Maybe the roofs would be down on the floor of the car, and you'd have these giant cavities for the wheels of the monster trucks to fall down into. So, the straw is doing its job, and I knew you'd want to know. Actually, I did this piece just so I could walk on the cars some more. <laughs> oh, is that a guy who loves his life or what? Well, this is the Kentuckian backing up, ready for the pull-off. Now, the full pull distance is up to 300 feet, and the sled gearing has been changed, and weight has been added. The Kentuckian, driven by Wayne Sullivan of Warsaw, Kentucky, one of the five men that will be in the 5,800-pound dragster tractor pull-off. Well, my man Steve now has his 12-foot ladder and is ready to interview Bennett Clark. Well, Bennett, I tell you what, I thought you were in trouble until Gary kind of lost it coming off of that bar jump and gave you the lead. Shoot, I, I come around the corner there, and I just nailed it with all I had. I cut the rear steering a little bit too hard, and I nailed it. I got to spinning. I stood in it all it had. It just got to spinning. I caught a little traction. He made a mistake, and I come. I just capitalized on it. Do you try to forget that other monster truck, or do you kind of subconsciously you always kind of looking out for it? Well, I made the turn. I, you know, you, you're always conscious of maybe rolling over into him because we was, we, was, we was going real fast down there. So I just made the turn. I just tried to stand in as hard as I could and tried to get the truck just straight as I could, just as quick as I could. And this smaller motor than his, I just really have to stretch it out all I can. See you in the final round. Okie doke. Thank you. Bennett Clark will face either Bigfoot or Southern Storm. Back in the pulling lanes, Kentuckian Wayne Sullivan puts the power to his machine. 300 foot is the distance. There's more weight there. And how will he do now in the pull-off? It may be a little nose-heavy, Paul. That front end didn't get quite as high as some of the drivers would like to have them. I'll tell you what, those motors get a little tired. Did you see the blow-by out of them? 245.71 feet for Wayne Sullivan and the Kentuckian. 
So his number goes into the book, and of course, that is the mark that everyone else will have to shoot against. And you know, we really don't know, I right, kids, we really don't know how tough that mark will be until we see the rest of the competition. But I think he's probably set a pretty good standard out there. Four others in this pull-off. One of them, this man, Missouri's Ed Govro, as he's ready to lay the power to his machine, warming up at the line. In the meantime, let's go back to the other end of the track. Steve is with Wayne Sullivan. Well, Wayne, that old sled was following you like a hungry hound dog until that blower belt came off. You could have got some more distance. That was obvious. That's for sure, yeah. I could have... If the blower valve had broke, I could have maybe won another 10 feet, and uh, that would have given him a little bit more to shoot at. I think it can beat me pretty easy now. Well, for your sake, let's hope not. Oh, yeah, we, we'll try next time to do a little bit better. Okay, thank you, Wayne. 300 feet is the course distance. The Blue Ox, Ed Gobro, on the line. The number to beat, 245.71 feet. Watch the butterflies in those twin fuel injectors, those red circles. Let's see how much power he gives on the initial launch here. Oh, not much at all, Paul. Barely cracked it open. Now the hammer goes down, but the box comes forward. Ed knows if there's too much power, then there's no traction at the back. The wheels just spin. Look at the torque trying to twist that frame completely over. The Blue Ox, Ed Govro, a new distance. He's pulled further now. Govro at 272.85 feet. So he's almost 30 feet further than Wayne Sullivan's pull. Well, he had a very good run in the first round. He really had it well balanced. He's got it balanced here. Look at him, look out in front, measure the course, decide exactly where he wants to place that machine. It's one magnificent run. Ed Govro, 272 feet. He's the benchmark now. Let's go down to Steve Evans. He's with Ed. Well, Ed, there was no question watching that. You used every ounce of horsepower in this machine, 272 feet. That, uh, it's hooking up again. That run, I believe uh, it might hold up there. That's a pretty good run. It went real straight. I touched the brake just one time, just a little bit. The DS Express pulls back for the hook. This is Billy Kelly. Denham Springs, Texas ball. And I tell you, he's in tough. One engine in this tractor. That was okay at 260 feet with a fairly light slide. But just one supercharged engine. You see the chrome exhaust tax there. He, he's in mighty tough. Well, don't discount that single engine. It was good enough to get him into this pull-off. So Billy Kelly, he is making his run now. Look at it. Take a hop. And it jumps all the way over to one side of the course. He tries to keep it under control. But it's not to be. Billy Kelly, his pull is 239.3 feet. Not nearly good enough. I know he's disappointed with that run. Well, nothing really went right for Billy Kelly on that pull, Paul. It appeared that uh, somehow he got off of the power and the front wheel set down. And when they did, they were cocked off to the right. Oh, boy. Here we go again. Monster trucks coming up here in the Astrodome when we return. It's a giant crowd here at the Astrodome, and they're being rewarded with a terrific show at the TNT Redman Super Nationals. I'm Paul Page with Steve Evans, and on the line, the monster trucks. There's Bigfoot. Bigfoot ready to face Southern Storm. Robbie Giles, the driver of this machine, and this is to determine who will go into the final round against Bennett Clark and Clydesdale. Well, you know, no truck in competition here tonight has more power or as much power as Bigfoot does with that 460 cubic inch supercharged Ford motor. But if Rich Hooser doesn't use all that power correctly, Paul, it could be a burden to him, actually. He can't use too much of it in certain parts of the course. He can sure use it all right here, though. Look at Bigfoot out, accelerate the competition, and fairly leap over those cars. Here is the critical part. As we've seen before, Hooser, a perfect turn. Bigfoot makes the turn back, now screams for the finish line, almost unchallenged, another jump up into the air, and Bigfoot wins it. Bigfoot wins over Southern Storm, Southern Storm still completing the course, and Bigfoot will go into the final round against Clydesdale. Well, Rich Hooser there, Paul, that was just a perfect example as to how to drive a monster truck. As far as Southern Storm is concerned, well, a few mistakes were made. Now you watch as he gets the air here, lands down in the cars, and suddenly it takes a bad hop on him. 
and that takes him off the edge of the course and then you're all hands and elbows trying to get it back pointed in the right direction and by that time Bigfoot is long gone. Here's Ron Headley. He's getting ready in the pull-off in the 5,800-pound dragster tractors. Now, we've already seen some super runs. Can Ron Headley get in with the action? Let's go down to Steve. Well, Rick, the kind of pounding you're taking in Bigfoot tonight, you're liable to be as sore in the morning as some of the uh, wide receivers that have played on this field. Yeah, well, it's not too bad. All the safety protection we got, our arm braces and back braces and arm pads, helmets, everything really helps out a lot to where you can have more control over the vehicle. Any problems on that semifinal win? Not at all. Uh, I had pretty much air in that first round, but it come down pretty smooth, and I was able to handle that turn pretty good. Looked awfully good to see in the final round. Yeah, one more time. All right. You definitely get bounced around in that cab, but smoothness is still the key. Over on the pulling circuit, Ron Headley backs it up, takes the hook. He's ready with Betty's headache in the pull-off. And he has to be 272 feet if he's to earn the top dollar tonight. Ron Headley, well, I'll tell you what, he's a big, husky boy. He doesn't need quite as much weight over the rear axle of the tractor as some of them do. Look at these two monster Hemi motors on alcohol fuel. There, the slack is out of the pulling chain. He's got to gather up his thoughts, make sure that the front wheels are pointed directly ahead. As far as Betty's concerned, I don't know which came first, the headache or the tractor. All right, watch that front end. That can be the key. It is up a bit too high. In fact, Kevin's got control problems. This is going to hurt him, Paul. It's turned into a cyclone out there. Plenty of power up front, but it started bouncing around very, very close. 268.8 feet. Not good enough to beat Ed Govro. So Ron Headley made his drive in the pull-off, but Ed Govro is still out in front. Let's again look at Ron Headley's pull that came up just a couple of feet short. Boy, it came out of the hole looking pretty good. He got on the brake to try to settle it down. The front wheels were pointed approximately the right direction. Look at him trying to keep those wheels, anticipate which way the tractor has to go when they land. But this thing, it just got completely out of control because he started to overcompensate something any driver would have done. You know, I wonder how much bite they actually get when they set those front wheels down. Well, Bob Chickering, he is the last man in the pull-off. That mighty Allison with its supercharger begins to roar. And will Bob Checkering be able to beat the distance of Ed Gobro? Steve? Well, Ron, this thing was pitching and bucking like it was trying to throw you into the cheap seats. You really had your hands full. Yeah, it, it came out, and it really hooked good there for a little bit. I started ground speed, and all of a sudden, I hit one of those holes, the tractor before me, and it just threw me sideways, and I had to really get on the brakes. Well, as you probably already know, you missed by well, about three feet. Probably, yeah, I seen that. It, it, I can see I wasn't quite to the cone. Well, the machine is the inch pincher, and Bob Chickering backs it up. He is the only man now who can beat Ed Gobro. We went into a five-man pull-off. Ed Gobro, to this point, has the best distance, 272.8. Can Chickering beat him? Steve? Well, Paul, this is Ed Govery. Ed is down here. It's nervous time. There's one more driver that uh, is about to hook because he's the last one in the uh, pull-up. What do you think? Uh, I think I got him there. You can tell, you know, when the tractor gets hooked up, that was a real good run there, and I had to wait right. Uh, I don't think he can get out there. And uh, drivers are telling me that you had a benefit of pulling early in the pull-up, but the track is deteriorating, getting some holes in it, making driving difficult. Uh, the track's not changing a whole lot there. It's, uh, it's not really that bad. Well, so far, the man's confidence has paid up. Let's watch and see what happens. Bob Chickering is ready to go. The revs come up in that engine, and Ed Dobro watches with Steve. All right, Bob Chickering is looking to that slant end. Tell us what you see. He looks like he's doing good. He's getting the front end up. Down there. I don't know. I don't know. This could be trouble. Oh, he's getting close. He didn't do it. I got it. All right. I'll tell you, this man knew from the minute he pulled that he was going to win this match. i tell you what, though, he scared you a little bit. Yeah, he was getting closer. I didn't think he'd get up there that far, but uh, it's, uh, it's pretty close. Now, well, let's official. You have won it. It looks like about three or four feet. It's, it's farther than it is. We're looking at it on an angle here, but it's a little farther than it looks from here. Again, congratulations. Thank you. Okay. There's a man who knows how to eye his distances. Bob Chickering, 259.5. Ed Govro, 272.85 feet. Wins in a five-way pull-off.
Coming up, Clydesdale and Bigfoot, the finals of the monster trucks. What a stick and ball game from the Astrodome where the crowd laughed early, but not tonight at the TNT Red Man Super Nationals. Not with the popularity of monster truck racing, particularly Bigfoot. The crowd loves that truck, and I'll tell you what, they're starting to take a liking to Clydesdale, Paul Page. Bennett Clark sits high in the air in the Clydesdale, watching the starter, green flag in hand, both machines are ready to go. This is the final round, Bigfoot with the white flags at the back of that truck. Rich Hooser sits at idle, waiting for the flash of green on the starting line, and he gets it. Immediately, the awesome power of Bigfoot is apparent. Oh, look at the leap. It's a wonder Bigfoot doesn't get fallen arches out of deals like that. Now, I don't know if that was intentional or if it was a lucky bounce, but Rich got a little bit sideways and actually it enabled him ball to make the turn a bit better. Clydesdale falling behind, only one more giant leap to go. It is Bigfoot, the champion in the Astrodome. Bigfoot takes the win. Rich Hooser is the champion here tonight. And it really was. Let's give him credit. I think it was a skillful piece of driving. Let's look at Bennett Clark. Finally just motors away, coming over that last mogul. Now watch this. Look how high he yanks this machine up into the air. 15 feet at least. And then as he comes down, he gives the machine a little twist that takes a turn and gets him set up so that he can make the turn at the end of the course. I think that's a planned maneuver. I think it shows the kind of skill that he has. And with that skill, Rich Hooser wins here in the Astrodome, and the crowd loves to see Bigfoot win. Congratulations. Great job. Thank you. Yeah, it was a good ride. We got a lot more air to keep putting that dirt up a little bit higher in them cars, and uh, I think people like the show a little bit better. Oh, boy, I'll tell you, it was deafening in here. But, you know, as good as Bob Chandler's Bigfoot trucks are, and there's a number of them, as good a drivers as you guys all are, there's some competition coming on now. Oh, yeah, there is. And uh, the only thing that we got to hope for is our skill of driving. We've been doing it pretty long, and we got a lot of practice in it. So hopefully if a uh, truck has a little bit more horsepower than us, we can outdrive them. Again, great job, great show. Just thrill it. Thank you. All right, there's your champion tonight. So congratulations to Rich, also to Ed Govro in the Dragster Tractors, and Tommy Osteen in the modified 4x4s. We've had a great night here in the Astrodome. Some great action with the TNT Redman Super Nationals. Paul Page for Steve Evans, so long from Houston, Texas. The executive producer for American Sports Cavalcade is Harvey M. Pallage. Produced and directed by John B. Mullen. Promotional consideration provided for and a fee paid by the Style Auto World Championship Team, the nation's premier source of fast lane fashions. Style Auto, the champion's choice for the style of your life. American Sports Cavalcade is a presentation of Diamond B Sports.